Well, Zigbee to MQTT is an awesome software to add support for all kinds of affordable Zigbee devices to your smart home. Plus, setting up Zigbee to MQTT is pretty easy as I have done numerous videos on it. However, there are still ways to get the best out of Zigbee to MQTT. So in this video, I will give you 10 tips to level up the way you use this amazing software. Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home using Apple's ecosystem. And I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along and to get some good vibes from me. Well, I have learned a lot while using the Zigbee to MQTT software for more than a year now. And in this video, I will show you tips that I wish I had known when I started. So before we deep dive into the tips, you need to have Zigbee to MQTT implemented within your smart home. And these tips are applicable for any smart home like HomeBridge, Home Assistant, and even OpenHAP that are connected with this software. And I saved the best tip for the last as it makes Zigbee to MQTT work flawlessly. So you really need to know why tip number 10 is my favorite. So let's start. Tip number one. Now to improve network range and stability, connect the Zigbee coordinator or router using an USB extension cable. Doing this, the range of these adapters are greatly improved instead of directly plugging it into the computer or a Raspberry Pi. Now, when plugged directly into the computer, the adapter suffers from radio signal interferences and other electrical components of the computer. Now, a USB extension cable of 50 centimeter is good enough to reduce this interference. Tip number two. Once you have Zigbee to MQTT installed, have access to the front end and already have devices paired, you want to go to settings and under availability, you want to enable the availability option and click on the restart button. By doing this, the moment you return back to the dashboard, you can easily check which devices are online or offline. Plus, this automatically takes out all of the guesswork in checking whether all of your devices are online. Tip number three, did you know that in Zigbee to MQTT, you can create a map of your existing entire Zigbee network? All you have to do is click on map and then click on load map. Now, depending on how many devices you have connected, it takes between 10 seconds to two minutes to load a complete map of all of your connected child devices and routers. Plus, you will also see the LQI value, which is the signal connection strength to the coordinator. Now, the beauty of this is that you know on how the devices are connected within the mesh network and through which devices messages will be sent. Pretty cool, right? Tip number four, add one device at a time to your Zigbee network. Let Zigbee to MQTT complete the interview process and add the device to the network. Doing this, the newly added device will connect to the nearest router and find the optimal connection to the coordinator. And within the same tip, you can always access the device setting specifics to tweak any specific behavior so that when it connects to your smart home platform, you don't need to tweak this again. It functions as default. Tip number five, Zigbee to MQTT creates several log files by default and the logs can be found on the left hand side of the toolbar. Over here, you can filter and debug when certain devices are not working or not responding to the commands sent within Zigbee to MQTT or your smart home platform. It makes debugging a breeze and easy to report as well. Tip number six, I have consistently said that using Zigbee to MQTT allows me to pick and choose from a plethora of devices. But where can you find out which device works with this software? Well, there are two locations. First one, being is accessing Zigbee to MQTT website and click on devices. And you can filter by vendor or by which values are exposed, or you can simply search for a specific device. The second one is accessing zigbee.blackadder.com. This is a huge Zigbee device repository and is also updated regularly. 
Here you can find devices by gateway and by device type. I personally use these sites to purchase my devices and have left links in the description. Tip number seven, make the Zigbee network secure. Once you are done adding all of your devices to your Zigbee network and your smart home, the rule of the thumb is click on settings and under main, you want to disable the permit join and then click on submit. With this done, no one can sniff your Zigbee network and at the same time, no devices can join and pair with your network, making it secured. Tip number eight, did you know there is an easy way of restarting your Zigbee to MQTT network and software without the need of using SSH or pasting any code? All you have to do is access the dashboard, click on settings, click on tools, click on restart Zigbee to MQTT. Simple. Your entire Zigbee to MQTT network will now restart and reconnect with all of the devices. Tip number nine. From time to time, you need to update the Zigbee to MQTT software. Now, if you have set up this software using a Docker container, then thanks to the Watchtower container, this update will be done automatically. But if your setup is like mine, that's installed via Linux, then once a month, you will need to execute these set of codes to update Zigbee to MQTT software, as well as the device database. Now I do this once a month and it's recommended to do so. Tip number 10. Now this is the big one and my favorite that allows Zigbee to MQTT work flawlessly. To do that, click on settings and then click on donate. Yes, you heard me right. Please support the project and the awesome developers that make all of this possible so that we can have an affordable smart home, allow us to connect with any white label Zigbee device and at the same time get 100% local control. And just like that, these are my 10 tips to level up yourself and unlock Zigbee to MQTT to work best for you. If I figure out anything new, then I will definitely update this video. And if I have missed out on anything, feel free to comment down below so that we can all learn something new. And if you don't have Zigbee to MQTD setup, you may want to refer to this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, have a nice day and happy automation.